Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Sips. Yeah. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. P Flax. How are you feeling? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's upset. You? He's I've upset been... because because uh, Donald Trump got arrested. That's <laughs> right. why he's upset. <laughs> right. It really upset me. It. Yeah, it's really he's upset He's really upset me. about that. It is the news. This is what the third time he's um he's the first time he was arrested was for the hunter the asking the Ukraine guy to check out Biden or whatever. Right? Yeah. Was, that was he actually arrested? For no, that? I think I think there's a difference between. Well, uh, that first was of the all, indictment. Right? That, that's an indictment. And there's also when you're the president, I don't think a sitting president, I could be wrong, but I don't think a sitting president has ever been arrested. No, but, but he's they, the first uh, former president to be arrested. He is. Right? Yeah. yeah. But then the second time he got in trouble was for the insurrection, which felt like a big one. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. He sort of managed to get away with these with a slap on the wrist. And this one again feels like to me, like, he's just going to say, uh, well, you know, my legal advice, this is what I was told, you know, my financial people were dealing with it, it wasn't me, you know, I didn't I didn't know I was breaking the law, you know, poor, poor me. He, will throw, he just, will throw people under the bus all he day will, long. He, yeah, he's yeah. just going to, gonna. I mean, the thing is, like, yes, he's been arrested, but looking at the charges, it's like for financial finagling, you know, it does feel like he's not going to see a jail cell ever and you know um god it's the ongoing saga of trump isn't it like it uh, is. do you know what it does feel a little bit nice because of the whole his whole angle was like from 2016 it was lo like lock her up lock hillary up lock her up right 2017 2018 lock her up and then like 2020 it's like lock up biden you know? <laughs> like put lock him up like the whole time he's been clamoring for his opponents to be arrested up, for yeah. their for their for their sort of minor i don't even know what he was saying they had done was it emails god knows right so I, but, as i as i understand uh, it, hillary clinton had a private email server and sometimes work emails so government emails in other words potentially sensitive material was on her service right, right. and that's and why trump took all those boxes of documents home what did she uh, just have to like his, uh, to his would garage she just, right? would she just have like uh like a like a linux server in her garage i like don't next, know next I mean, to Bill's she just Ferrari. had a phone first of all there's, there's no way she set it up like there's no way hillary's there in the garage setting up a linux box I, well I don't we don't know that. that for sure i mean I, i'm gonna go on a limb and that's say. true maybe she's into linux you know maybe, maybe she's, she's a, maybe she's a maybe big, she's a hacker maybe she maybe she likes ubuntu maybe She's yeah, like maybe school. she does. Yeah, yeah. Open BSD. Maybe that's her, <laughs> her favorite flavor. She's, she's booting off a USB thumb drive and grepping with the best of them. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Just grepping, <laughs> grepping left, right, and center. Old, uh, old, old Hillary. She's oh, a, by yeah, the way, she's sorry, a, these are references that only programmers. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is if, 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 if America have got problems with that, we've got problems with fucking gropers. That's how old uh, Al Boris <laughs> got kicked out, wasn't it? With well, old Pincher. Who? Yeah, well, um, oh, that's right. Yeah, the uh, the uh, the 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 butt pinching guy. Yeah, so God, Boris, that was his, Boris that was had, his um, fault. Well, he Boris knew it because he made a joke. He said, "Pincher by name, pincher by nature," and then he put him in the fucking cabinet or whatever. Yeah, it's, fucking like, hell. it's crazy. They, all of these people would have been booted out thirty years ago. I'm convinced of that. Like all a lot of yeah. this stuff. You look at the political scandals that there were not that long ago. People will pe first of all, politicians had some fucking dignity and resigned when they did shit like this. Well, they um, would certainly resign before they got to the point where they were going to be like uh, properly impeached or arrested or whatever. Yeah, I yeah, feel they, like they, they at they least had a little bit, a little yeah. bit of fucking dignity and a little bit of respect for the system. But well, that's gone out the window. Uh, really, it's just oh, it's all gone. It's all just a fucking sham, and uh, it feels like uh, they just want to destroy any interest that the, that anybody has in politics. I've stopped it's kind following of, it's it. Kind as much as possible. Though. I, it's kind of funny, though. I think I think that it's a. I think that the real thing is that people watched him on telly, and so they feel like they're, it's like the Jeremy Clarkson effect. You know, you know he's a cunt, but it's pretty. It's pretty funny to watch on telly sometimes. I suppose right? so. Yeah. It, in in Clarkson's case, yes, because he is just uh, an entertainer. But it, it is worrying when it's like the you know so called leader, the leader of the, of the free, free world. world. You're yeah. right. You're very, it's very uh, stressful. It anyway, we won't talk about politics too much because otherwise we get into dad mode and get all salty. About oh, everything. true, true, true. Man, I have been dadding up a, a storm recently. I've had like lots of lots of dad stuff to do generally, but there's a whole bunch of work going on in my house. The driveway's been torn up. They've laid some new pipes. 
pipes the plumber's been in. Fucking drywall is going up. Like, oh my God, it is just, it's chaos in there. But mm. in a weird way, I'm just loving it. You know, like uh, I just, I have people to talk to all the time, you know, and I can really just stand outside and like, you know, cross my arms and talk about really important things or like really serious things as well. Like oh, right. what kind of drywall are you using? What sort of screws will you be screwing it in with and, and all that kind of stuff? It's great. So it's a real outlet for me, you know, like uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't get to do this stuff that often. So it's like... It's pretty great. It's like a real life version of the kind of games that you play, like the, the power it is, wash. Yeah. And, yeah. My wife and my kids, though, are miserable as a result. Like the baby is just crying all the time because they're drilling stuff like into the walls. It's like shaking the whole house and mm. stuff. And my kids are just trying to enjoy two weeks off of school for Easter. And it's like, no, nah. they, these guys turn up like seven in the morning. They're drilling straight away. Like just nonstop drilling all the way to like five o'clock, sometimes even later. They do shift patterns. So like two guys will come turn up at like three o'clock and stay till wow. eight, just drilling all the time. Like, oh man, it's crazy. It's good though. Mm. It'll be nice to uh, it, my it, it. It'll be nice to have uh, somewhere to park my uh, fifty five extra Ferraris. Like, uh, cause that's the problem right now. They're just they're just in a field. So I need uh, I need a gold plated elevator access. They're just all on the road. Super stacker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the stacker system are terrible. <laughs> Do not even. Do not even get me started no. on the stacker. No, well, it's uh, it's confusing. I don't know where my favorite Ferrari is in the, in the <laughs> pile. It's hard to find. So that's my big problem. That's the big issue I've got. Maybe I need a yeah. computerized system or something. I don't know. Get Hillary around. Maybe. Yeah, she yeah. Maybe she can get some. Oh, she, she can. Maybe she could do a couple of grep pipes and stuff and uh, figure <laughs> out where my favorite Ferrari is. Have I talked about this before? But I live in my apartment place. We got a stacker system with the cars, and you know the idea is that. It, I guess when it was built 20 years ago or 30 years ago, it was, it was just, you know, a great way to save space and it yeah. actually breaks all the time. It's incredibly expensive to maintain. It's like a piece of shit. And the other thing is that everyone now has cars that are too big, right? Yeah. I mean, God, this yeah. is a problem in America in particular in that, you know, every, everyone's driving a fucking SUV and a light truck or what the fuck, a fucking, every, every car, even like normal cars are twice It's like that size, over right? here because now, though, too. See, like it's those, not as uh, bad. It's the Land Rovers and Range Rovers. And it's stuff. not they're as bad, huge. but it is happening. Yeah. Sure. There's this idea that, like, they're safer. Like, there's this whole problem. I watched a video on it on YouTube yesterday by this fairly compelling guy, but he was uh, just talking about how the, a bunch of s situations where it's ta it's cheaper to, like, sell these cars because there's no tax on them because they're like technically business things and you know all, all this stuff and they don't share the same rules and ground clearance and all this stuff right so they and also they're in their own category so it's kind of like this arms race where parents are being told that in order for their kids to be safe they have to be in one of these light trucks effectively obviously that's like massively disproportionately affecting people who can afford it and so it's just one of these and and, and you know car acts like pedestrian deaths have gone way up because they have this higher. They don't see kids in front of the cars anymore. Anyway, it's 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 a huge problem. But it's to say it's obviously anything that happens in America also affects stuff here. And as a result, car sizes have gone up. And so everyone in my fancy apartment complex where I live has a massive fucking Land Rover, right? right. And they drive it onto the stacker, and it's just too heavy, and it instantly fucking breaks it, right? Every day, but they're not going to stop using the stacker because that's the only place to park, right? So mm, yeah, yeah, it's just you live in a city as well, right? There's nowhere to park. You can't. And, just park and on most the side importantly, of the road or it's Bristol, which hates yeah. cars, yes. and there is very few places to park. Have it whenever I come down. It's always like, where the fuck am I going to park? So I think maybe it would be a good idea if it wasn't for this like issue of of uh, giganto cars. Mm. Um, everyone has. But uh, I, I, think I, I was just, intrigued that you described yeah. him. Uh, well, how did you describe the 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 fella uh, the the YouTube you'd watched as a reasonably compelling? Or, or, <laughs> yeah, I thought that well, was interesting. I meant like in a sense that I, it kept my attention. Mm. It didn't compel him to the max, but there was <laughs> no. a little tiny bit of. I was mildly compulsed. It's compulsed. True. There's hundreds and hundreds of of fairly generic. YouTubers making fairly generic videos, but they got the ring some light. of them are actually pretty good. Yeah, they got the ring light. It's all very edited. They drop a meme in now and then. It's a it's a yeah. Format. Some of them I absolutely can't fucking stand, and they irritate me so much. Like with their their take on things, but mm. but some of them are making really good content, mainly when they don't focus on themselves too much. Mm. Um, 
you know, they're just a, just a, a narrator and they put together. I watched a really good one about, because there's this long documentary on Netflix about D.B. Cooper, right? Mm, and which is really not that interesting. A story. It's not is, at all. It's yeah. not. It's, 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 it's so really boring. dragging it out. Way. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other one on Netflix is this MH370 Netflix. Is that um, the plane that yeah. got shot down by the Russians? No, that's MH17. Oh. Um, the one, the 370 is the one that disappeared. Oh um, yeah. And well, was, in Malaysia, the, the yeah. Malaysian yeah. one. Yeah. But it, but it, but it was obviously an interesting story at the time, and it's still an interesting story now. But the the Netflix documentary drags it out way too much, and not yeah. only that, but like it talks to all these conspiracy theorists who think that. The Russian, some Russian agent got on board and crashed it in, you oh, know, man. Kazakhstan or something. Yeah. And it's absolute nonsense, but it's sort of presented as as fact mm. just because it's done lazily. And oh god, like I think that the I, I mean I think basically that like that I watched um there's a DB Cooper thing on 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 YouTube. It's like half an hour. Yeah, that's all you need guy. for DB Cooper. It was like, bro, honestly, half an hour is enough. It's on a channel called Lemino. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. It was it was 27 minutes, 27, and 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 I loved it. It was like gave me the whole thing in yeah. like a really concise form. Yeah, and like I was like, damn, why why aren't more stuff like this? I agree. You know? It was nice and concise. Here are the facts. Here's what's happened since. Here are some theories we don't know. Like end yeah. of the story. Yeah. And it was it wasn't like. It wasn't like scattered with unnecessary. I, I don't mind a little bit of talking to the f people related to the to the story, like you know, like. But it does feel a bit like sadness porn sometimes when you go through all of the crying friends of people who you know, some of which are genuine sufferers, mm. and some of which are just fucking random people who want to have a bit of screen time. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean. we, we were talking about politics just this might be interesting this is an email from from andrew a long-time listener but after episode 251 he felt like reaching out uh, while listening to the podcast i was applying for a summer internship in washington dc nice. when lewis brought up young people in politics today you must have right. done that at some point we won't remember it lulu i apologize that seems like a no very idea. lewis thing to, to mention yeah uh, and i felt like sharing my experience as a young person entering politics uh, he's not going to talk about whether he's on the left or the right, but maybe the podcast will find it interesting to hear about the day-to-day -day of a Barclay student trying to break into DC politics. Most of the time working in politics is exactly what Lewis talked about, frustrating. The day-to-day -day of young people in politics can be quite tedious with essentially unending administrative work and research assignments, but some of it can be interesting. I've had the chance to sit in on congressional and senate committees about foreign affairs and US defense policy, but Andrew says it's extremely competitive, everybody's clambering over each other and you have to work over 50 hours a week just to show your commitment, right. and that's for the interns as well. Um, but he's made some good mates and, you know, I, I guess a lot of people will progress through politics at a similar kind of pace, so you'll know people that are also on their way up. Yes. Um, I think the interesting thing is, if you think about, the, I mean, I know that one of the things that, that people assume is that MPs over here and politicians in the US, that they're perpetually at odds, but they'll go to the pub and they'll hang out and they're mates and all the rest of it, and they get on perfectly well. It's just the job is what sets them at odds. But if you've been working around someone for 20, 25 years, you both started off as junior whatever's yeah. making your way through politics. You, you're going to have friends on opposing sides of the uh, the aisle. I just find it, um, I find it interesting if you're starting off in this field, I've got some follow-up questions, which is, if this doesn't work out, how likely is it for you to just be able to leave and go to a business and say, I've been working in politics for the last 10 years, you know, I don't have any contacts, I don't know, I can't call up a senator and say, hey, can we knock down that forest or whatever. Um, you know, it's it's more like what, what what does this go on to if the politics side doesn't work out, and what can it lead to eventually? I guess would be my question. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess you got to be really dedicated to the whole thing. I mean, maybe you don't need to be big time like DC politics. You know, you can maybe mm. get involved like with local politics or something once you have some experience. I don't know. I'd I honestly be shocked if if politics didn't set you up for like. It does sound like woolly now. I'm saying it, but I feel like it's it, it's 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 not actually that bad, right? It's not like you probably like you're be a anything. pretty good like account manager or something off the back of being in politics, right? Because you, I imagine most of your days are spent just dealing with people, but dealing with tricky people as well. You know, mm. like well, you're it's not a dealing like with normal studying, people. You're, yeah, I guess I. I guess it's like studying a subject that's quite hard, yeah. and then people will recruit you just because they know that you're able to learn and deal yeah. with complicated issues. And 
and like figure it's like stuff a shorthand out. for being smart or competent isn't it really it's like it does feel like that to me even yeah. though we have a pretty heavy disdain for politics <laughs> yeah they all do seem like dumbasses somehow but i, uh, I mean i know i know a, a, a guy that i was at school with um was in was in politics um he was part of the i think he was he was fairly senior in, in johnson's government as one of the sort of underling lads if you like the the, the analysts or whatever yeah, yeah. advisors and uh he was yeah i think um i mean he's a, he's a good lad so i think he i think he, he may have stepped down I, i'm not sure because of all the shit that's going on but um yeah, I mean, you know, most of the interesting stuff, he can't really talk to you about it, but it's amazing how much is decided by just a handful of, of people. I, I, I guess it was such why... a long time ago as well. I mean, uh, yeah. Lyndon, Lyndon B. Johnson is what, um, he was the, uh, oh, he died in, he died in 1973. Mm. Yeah, so I'm that was, old. <laughs> he was president of the United States from 1963 to 1969. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, my friend uh, obviously was not, a American. Oh and, right, and, my bad. Yeah, yeah. No, that is easy mistake to make. When I, I talk know. about my childhood, people go back to the fifties. I can't obviously. place your accent. I always think like could, <laughs> could be Cajun. I don't know. It could be. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, well, I've also had an email. I, this isn't a mailbag, but I want to chuck a couple of these in. This is from uh, a lad called Stroby. This is a defense of Sips at the zoo. <gasps> you might. I thought you might appreciate this. At one. last. <laughs> yes. Okay. I wanted to get in contact as this had been bugging me every time it comes up. While I do not profess to know anything about Sips's financial world, I assume as a Channel Island resident he pays his tax there. Yes. And therefore is not a UK taxpayer. No. This means he is not eligible to gift aid. No. So when Sips told the right honourable listener he couldn't use gift aid for tax <laughs> reasons, the right honorable. Yes. he was bang on the money and the listener can just pipe down. So there you go Sips, you can consider yourself Exonerated. Yeah, for, That's from at last. Stroby. Free. There you go. God, justice is served. Oh man, yep. it feels great too. Holy crap! It is a it's a dish best served. Yeah. No, thanks so much. Thank <laughs> best you. Best served. Yeah. <laughs> Just serve it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Jeez. Hmm. Yeah, it's true Speaking though. Of, I do um, pay tax here, but I don't pay UK yeah, tax. I was. I. I remember. This was a long time ago now. But wasn't there a, like I think it was Belgium who didn't have a government for like. Two years. That sounds about right. right. That sounds like a very um, Belgian thing to do, right? And I don't know whether they were fine or not. No. But I guess what I'm saying is, a lot of the time, the government is doing stuff, putting forward laws, putting forward, you know, putting forward other stuff. It feels like sometimes as many good ones are put forward as bad ones, right? Oh, like, yeah. you know, a lot of them just slip through the crack as well. You know, a lot of laws go in that are so boring that nobody even cares or reads about them. You know what I mean? And it's mm, and yeah. it'll only be like years down the line when it affects something that's exciting or fun that people are like, how did we let that through? Up. I think you need to spice this stuff up, right? Yeah. Because I don't know what laws are going through Parliament at the moment. I know. Maybe because they're just... But I think it's because they're boring. Um, and I'm not saying that... I'm not saying that we should make up laws just for the fun of it. But that's how our media is set what up, if, right? What they if legislation report, always like, ended with interesting a, shit. With a death match in a cage, you know? Like, <laughs> right. So, like, the, the, okay. the, the, lead, the lead person who wants to not pass the legislation has to physically, to the death, fight the person who really wants to pass the legislation. Right. I'd be up for that. So more like wrestling. We get more wrestlers in government. Yeah, but it's so but it's the the person the person who wins who gets believes their way. in there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's true. If they don't really believe in their side, they're not gonna yeah. have that rocky spirit, are yeah. they? Yeah. And there'd you have know? to be some rules around, you know, like in Game of Thrones, how they can like, you know, nominate you know, a, a, a big fucking uh, <laughs> a brick guy. shit house of right. a man in their place or whatever. I see, you're very quickly returning to... You can't do that like a, either. Yeah. You have to fight it for yourself. So you got you got to put right. your okay, money good. where your mouth is. So if you come up with some stupid legislation and somebody wants to, wants to burn it down, but that person, you know, like jogs every day and lifts weights and stuff and you're, you don't, well, you know what I mean? Maybe you'll think twice. Are you saying that Donald Trump should ask for a trial by combat? <laughs> <laughs> He could uh, he, he could probably do a would burger could, eating yeah. contest. The man eats a lot of burgers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're talking about big guys. I've been watching. I think it's Peacemaker, Peacemaker. the John Cena oh, yeah. DC thing. It's, yeah, it's uh, good. It's fun, isn't it? It's James fun. Gunn. It is. I I I, I realize this is a very uh, typical criticism that people have these days of these kind of shows, and 
I'm not against it. Um, I think it all started with Tarantino, but I'll make my point. A lot of the dialogue that comes out of the mouths of the characters feels like it's been shoehorned in to make some kind of pop culture reference. Yeah, it's like it, maybe it's all AI generated. I'm not kidding. It feels like it because it's like there was a bit and there was a scene last night. They're on a stakeout in this van and one of the characters mentions the Berenstein Bears. Oh, yeah. And it's actually the Berenstain Bears. The Berenstain and, Bears. They used to yeah. have those. Um, they used to always have those those cool parts of the book where they would like go into a tree, but it was like yes. this massive underground maze complex and you'd get like the side view. I love that. And it had all the furniture and shit and you could see them like running down all the holes and in the hallways yeah, and stuff. That was literally, I mean, that that and Richard Scarry books where you could look at like, like I liked looking at a huge panel with loads of detail. Yeah. Of like, like you said, the cutaway of a house so you yes. can see their tree house love that and yeah. i remember when my mum would read it to me i would i would stop we'd have to stop on those pages so i could just my eyes could take in everything i don't know why i, I could have just looked uh, in my too. own time but it was a when i grew thing. up no well, you we want to read book. with your mum though when you're yeah, small yeah, eh? yeah of course my parents yeah, got fun. a book called stephen beat seeds Stees. i can't even say his surname Incredible cross sections. Right. right. I mean, it was this huge book, and it was like it would show like the Titanic cut into cross sections. It would be all. It would be just like it's like a Where's Wally? Only there's no Wally in there. Right, it's just right. detail. And Wally I, is the person reading it. Fascinated hey, by hey. these these books, but yeah, like like there's something about that that I don't know. It was just it was it, it was like tr trick educational yeah. for me right yeah. like but man i, I think those I are, those, those like work that. great yeah 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 i still still got that stuff i've got um thing explainer which A is thing um, explainer yeah which is um randall monroe's the guy who wrote um xkcd he wrote a book called thing explainer which is basically it's 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 a really cool concept so the idea is is that he's only using a vocabulary of the 1000 most common words right and so for example, a microwave isn't that, it's a food heating radio box, right? And a bridge is a very tall road and a, you know, a data center is like a computer room, stuff like this, right? So it's it's kind of, it's very clever, like like the solar system is like the other worlds around our sun, right? So he doesn't have to use, so he, ha he has to try and find ways to explain incredibly complicated things and how they work. In, with, in a way that our, us morons could understand. And in a sense, like actually it's kind of funny, but also silly, but also kind of hard sometimes to work it out work out backwards what he's what words he's used because it's almost too used to seeing like you know these complicated words that when you try and break them down you almost have to like do a little bit of like well i do anyway <laughs> have to like be like what the fuck does this mean even though it's like really simple right yeah. like stuff inside us right how do you how do you explain like cells or whatever you know yeah like tiny small living things inside us is it's yeah it's like kind of really interesting um but yeah someone sent me a copy of that and I, i've got that's kind of a modern i, I don't know that just reminded me of the old the old book i used to have when i was a kid yeah i loved i loved that Stephen I'd Beatsy. Be, you know, it's a very funny. science museum purchase. Did is, you, would you put very... your beanie cap on and fill a briefcase full of jelly beans, poop your pants, and go to school as well? <laughs> <laughs> what is that a reference to? No, I'm just uh, trying to get an insight into Lewis's yeah. childhood. <laughs> I had one of the five of those spinny <laughs> the little beanie cap hats. with the propellers, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, propeller yeah. on top. Yeah. Wee. <laughs> Yeah, I like those. I, you know what? I was thinking about. Um, I, I, I've been, I've been struggling to get to sleep at night as usual, and I why was thinking, are you, are your thoughts are your is your mind occupied with too many thoughts? Yeah. Oh man. So I, we've got a, a I've, I've mentioned this before. We've got like a white noise machine in the in the bedroom. You turn it on, and it goes like like that. Yeah. Uh, and it helps with me to uh, if I focus on that noise, I go to sleep quite quickly. But my brain is quite intrusive, and it's sort of. You know, and I'll get thinking about something and then I can't stop thinking about it. It's very common, I'm sure, anyway. I was thinking about how the first cell, like, evolved. Right. Um, uh -huh. And we'd, we'd watched this thing. I think it was an, it might have been an Attenborough or, no, no, it was Ramesh. I can't pronounce his last name. Ranganathan. R R Ranganathan. It was his um, uh, travel show and he went to, I think he was in Ethiopia. He was in somewhere else as well. And they come across this um, sort of area, which is just, it looks like a primordial part of the earth. 
It's like all yes. these crazy little hot springs and bubbling. There's all like a myriad colors, very strong smell of very, very base chemicals like sulfur. And it's quite acidic. And there's all this stuff going on. Uh, and it's warm and it just sits there. And it's like, there's not much wind. It's in this little sort of valley area. And I'm thinking that pe people wonder about how, how it's possible that something could go from being alive to not being alive. Because it would have to be a moment where you could define this clump of amino acids that's formed to go from that to a definitive thing yeah. that then replicates itself. That that leap was the, the biggest leap in evolution, much bigger than the leap that resulted in us. Because you've gone from nothing to, to something alive. I'm not saying nothing, but like clumps of chemicals and, and, and amino acids and all this kind of stuff, and eventually somehow this congeals over a ridiculous period of time. Man, how are you not falling asleep when you're thinking about this? Because it's amazing. <laughs> that would make, that would send me off immediately. I was thinking, what what like you wouldn't have a cell wall forming just for something that didn't need it, but something might benefit from it. So, what is the the chance that it was like bubbles, like some kind of very very small bubbles and foam that resulted in things living in those pockets, and that was the initial cell, if you like, that they relied on bubbles in the whatever they were living in, that that was where life form was in this foam. And then those creatures, if you want to call them that, could the ones that persisted were the ones that perhaps excreted something that helped to build up the wall of their bubble so it didn't pop. Um, but then I, I got confused. I didn't know if that was the case. If anyone out there is an evolutionary biologist, um, I would love to know yeah, uh, more about maybe it. the excretion was the the world's first ever cum bubble. <laughs> oh my god! Lovely, lovely. That is... <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that out there. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> Don't say this podcast doesn't cover all. The oh topics, my god! Because we really we <laughs> went from evolution of proto life forms <laughs> to cum bubbles like like that like that. Oh my god! <laughs> The hard, this is the hard-hitting oh, science man. journalism I'm signed up for. Today's sponsor is ExpressVPN. When you go to the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? You don't want random people watching what you're doing. That's why I use ExpressVPN when I'm browsing online to protect my online privacy. Your ISP knows every single website you visit and everything you type in, and they will sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who use this data to target you. Uh, ExpressVPN allows a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so your online activity can't be seen by anyone. It works on phones, laptops, routers, so anyone who shares your Wi-Fi is protected. And all you have to do is fire up the ExpressVPN app, click one button, it's as easy as closing the bathroom door. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free by going to expressvpn.com slash Triforce. That's expressvpn.com slash Triforce for three months extra free. Thank you very much. I'm going to change the subject. This is, this is from Josh. Uh, Good day, lads. Writing to you Writing to you from the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Oh. I'm currently sailing. <laughs> currently the... inside a massive cum bubble. <laughs> cum bubble. Please send help. Uh, James I'm... Cameron's here. <laughs> James Fuck Cameron. Him James Cameron presents cum bubble. Cum bubble. <laughs> the Pacific Rim. I'm currently oh. sailing from the west coast of Mexico to Hawaii by myself. Holy shit! On Whoa. my forty foot sailboat named Atlas. Oh, uh, nice. Which is a terrible name for a young girl, but I feel it's an acceptable name for a good stout boat. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elbows deep rebuilding the ship's head, or better known to landlubbers as the toilet, I figured what better way to procrastinate the nasty bits than to write into my favorite plumbing and handyman podcast, The <laughs> Yes. Did you uh, put an S bend on the. Uh, on you gotta the, get the S bend. You there. gotta get the S bend down there. It's no good otherwise. Listen to you guys all the time out here. Thank you for keeping me company. I think it was Sipsy said it would be cool to pack up everything in a boat and go somewhere and be self sufficient. Yes, I, I can, did say that. Yeah. I can personally confirm it's very cool. Yeah. Sorry for the long winded message, but I leave you with this one cool fact. This email was sent via MF slash HF radio, which is an outdated but very neat way to communicate from the middle of the ocean with no Wi-Fi. All the best, Josh. Wow. We got so this email came from the middle. This was 21 hours ago. So he is actually there in, in the middle the of the ocean. Pacific, alone in, in his sailboat, hell. the Atlas. Fixing and the sent crapper. this email via yeah. medium frequency, high frequency radio. Good best of luck to you, Josh. Man, and, uh, good luck uh, and safe travels and uh, drop us a line when you make it to Hawaii. I can't wait yeah. to hear about it.
Yeah, do that. Keep us up to date. Why maybe some, just... maybe a picture of your boat as well. Yeah, could you not just poop off the side? That's disgusting. Yeah. You can, but you don't know which way the currents are going. What if uh, what if it ra- what if it does a roundabout and then comes back and and hits you? You know. Oh right. Okay. What if it swirls? You know? What if you're like bump? If it's if you say it's too bumpy, that's even. I mean, doing it on the crapper is even challenging, right? Imagine you. Imagine you did. You crapped over the side of the uh, the boat and thought that was the end of it, and then the perfect storm hit. And just as the waves are rising, you're just outside on the boat trying to like, you know, control the rigging or whatever. And all of a sudden, boom, just a giant turd hits you in the face. All right. It just comes off one yeah. of, off the crest of one of the waves and it's yours. You <laughs> recognize that smell anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's got to be no one else. It's, it's no one else karma. in 200 yeah, miles. That's a, you can't. Uh, there's lots. Of, there's lots that goes into uh, to sailing on the sea. Lots of like little rituals and good luck dances and chants and stuff like that. You know, you gotta. It's a. It's a bit. It's a bit they were very. Nature, it's they a, were very superstitious. I think because you beast. are. You are at the whims of nature. Oh, you there. are. Absolutely. There's no help. It is. I mean, it's you like it's. There. You know, we we've, we've definitely said before. It's like it is the outer space of its day. Yeah. You are literally casting yourself off into the void there's yeah. nothing above you there's nothing below you if your ship goes down you're fucked there's no no way to get food other than what are you gonna eat eat fish come on pull the other one we need yeah. grog no grog no work you can do a richard uh, parker while you're out there just get the, richard parker? The, the tiger on the boat and the um mm. you get the fish i can't remember what he ate actually what who's the hell was that movie that? called what was that life movie of called? pie life of pie yeah, that's, that's the a, one yeah. it was a book more famously than a movie but yeah that's all right the movie sorry was i'm not good, well though. read right. movie was movie was, movie was popular dude it, it, was, was, I mean, nice. it was a very it famous was, it was visually stunning movie I, remember I mean going oh to see yeah it. you could say lord of the rings was much more well known as a movie but it was also a very big book that's all i'm saying okay yeah um uh, we had an email. This is uh, I like this one. This is from Willow. Hi, Ted, Chris, and Lewis. That's very Hi. formal. Willow. Very, very formal. Just wanted to let you know your audience for the podcast isn't just dads. <laughs> it's not. Ga- gamers and 13-year-old boys. Oh, that's man. a shame, because that's what we've been aiming at. Is that, yeah, that, that is what we've been aiming at. Our market research tells us that that is the case, but maybe yeah. you know something we don't. Well, apparently, well, that's what we are a blend of, you see. So that's what we assume. Oh, yeah, we're, you know. we're both we're a collection. Who brings of dads which and gamers. energy? Would you say? Well, uh, we've all got the mind of a thirteen-year-old boy. I would suggest. I suppose like, so, it's yeah. true. Driven. But anyway, Willow is a twenty-year-old female <laughs> textiles art student from Bournemouth. Get wow! In. Get in. Yes. <laughs> what? A, just because she's from Bournemouth? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. So it doesn't mean she supports Port. What if she supports Portsmouth? Um, no, no, FC. no, no. She's Willow's, a Willow's fan. from Bournemouth. A she, pom- <laughs> she might be. A <laughs> Don't say fan. Pompey. Oh, I had an email about <laughs> Luton. If you guys wanted to hear, we were slagging off Luton the other day. When? Uh, I can't remember, but we were. Slagging I was it actually off. slagging off Luton on uh, on stream. I think. And I did mention at the time, add this to the list of places where uh, I'm I'm an outlaw, like Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. I thought I'd keep it closer to home this time and say that oh, well, Luton was a bit of a dump, but we, maybe it's we've not. We've had multiple Luton emails, so oh, we no. definitely must have mentioned it. I've never been to Luton, uh, by the way. Just I'm just saying. I have. Do- it was terrible. All right, um, good. Okay. I'm glad you've been. Uh, let me see if I can find a good one about Luton here. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Um, You'll be looking for just... a while. I don't think Luton's that great of a place on. Like, no, I, I mean, know I've never been. Email. Oh, right, okay. Have you ever been to Luton, Lewis? Luton, Lewis. Um, Lewis and Luton. Oh, oh, here we go. Hey, chaps. Uh, this is John Smith. He didn't want me to use his real name, so this right. is John Smith. Right. Um, is I he presume, a Luton resident? Uh, yes. I presume by the time you read this, it will be it will be much later. John I am, Smith. however, from Luton. It's not as bad as it sounds. This is a week ago. We don't know what the state John Smith is in now, but... <laughs> Right. Okay. Due to due to the TV show Twenty Four Hours in Police Custody, it's put a spotlight on Luton. I'll say because I watched that show and Luton looks like a dump. The one thing to remember: the Luton does seem to get the fair share, but the show is based in the three counties, which oh. are, we've had for some time a lack of police and social care, leading to some people turning to crime. However, I'd say that this could be the case for most rundown and underfunded towns or cities. Look, I think just just in your first paragraph. I'm not having a go at the people of Luton. No, for, but to for say being... that you have no police or social care and it's yeah. a rundown, yeah, unfunded city center kind of kind of contradicts anything you might say about it being a nice place at, exactly. at a surface level. I would say. In know? the past few years, there has been a large effort to redevelop the city center with a plan for power court uh, and green spaces. Power court, I think, is the football stadium. 
Oh. I do feel at times Luton has become the butt of jokes by default. However, it's from this many people in Luton try hard to improve things for all. Despite a few bad eggs, I actually knew someone who appeared on the show from school. So it shows what a small town it can be. Oh, wow. On a slightly funnier note, a favourite story of mine was from back in high school. This is interesting. The War of the Fields. This is just setting the tone for how Luton is actually a great place. He's then going to tell us a story about how there was a huge fight outside his school. These two schools were very close to each other and they'd walk past each other on the way home through this large open field. On many occasions, both schools would divert into this field into battle formation. Wow. The larger units being the Chavs, rugby and football players formed in the front of the force with smaller and more agile Chavs behind shouting abuse and battle cries. Behind this would be the regular troops throwing stones, traffic cones, etc. The most feared were our champions. Aggressive, battle-hardened leaders ready to fight even if you looked at them the wrong way. These battles would usually end with the arrival of teachers at full sprint heading into the battle at the cavalry, parting both sides. So again, um, Mr. John Smith, you're, you're telling us the Luton is not that bad. You're telling us that it's really run down, they're trying to redevelop it, and that when you were children, your children have pitched battles on the fields after school. Yeah. I, uh, I, I say Luton needs to be written off at this point. Yeah, it's not sounding too great. I mean, maybe uh, if you're into all the, all those kinds of things, it's it's you know like some sort of mecca or whatever. But yeah, it doesn't sound great, honestly. Like, it really uh, doesn't sound yeah. great. A if lot I'm, of defensive. I, I want to if I want to visit there for a weekend or whatever. Is that what I can expect? Just lots of lots of fighting, pitch pitched pitch, pitch battles. Uh, yeah. Well, I think I think again, like it depends, doesn't it? Like uh, there's definitely worse places in the UK. The Blackpool is the worst at the moment. I think it's a real place that's run down a lot of drug problems a lot of like major systemic problems and the very low like life expectancy for people really there. um in black yeah it's like yeah blackpool it's like it's like it's, it's like the, the las the, um, vegas of the uk right how could they have let it get <laughs> to this point it's, i know it's according to this this wikipedia article i read it's they got the grand um, ballroom there and strictly come dancing is recorded there every year at one point the average life expect the national life expectancy for the uk is 79 for men and 83 for women Jeez. but in blackpool it's 54 for men and 55 what? for women there's Why is a lot it so of people low? who well i think it's it's just the, it's just got a lot of drug problems uh, right. it's got a lot of like um, it would have to have a lot of drug problems to to affect the um the 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 life expectancy age to that extent right now what's the population yeah. of blackpool 10 um, well it, it's just gone down it's going down yeah, it's going yeah. down big time yeah <laughs> i think i think a lot of it as well is fast um, enough to keep up. when you have an area that is uniformly poor Diet tends to be poorer, so people tend to get things like uh, oh. heart, heart disease and heart attacks and obesity and all the illnesses associated with that. Right. Very quite quite quickly. Um, so a lot a lot of a lot of areas that tend to be poorer tend not to eat um, as healthily as they as wealthier areas do. Well, actually, it right. says it, it says here it's only seventy two point three actually, which is the same as some of the American states like West Virginia and Mississippi. So maybe it's not actually West all that bad. Virginia. Or maybe the American states are pretty bad. I think some of these American states have lower life expectancy than places like you know what I wonder, Columbia. I wonder, out of interest, which state has the lowest life? It's expect Mississippi. It is apparently. Mississippi State. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then West Virginia right next to it. West Virginia! 74.4. Um, West Virginia! West Virginia! The highest life expectancy in 2019, can you guess? Maine. Japan. Can you guess? It is Japan. Oh, That's Japan. Right. Oh, People sorry, live I thought you were talking about Japan. states still. Oh, what state? Uh, Maine. I'd say, Maine. I'd say California. It is actually, it is California and Hawaii tied. Oh my god. Um... I don't know where Maine is. I can't. I've got. Yeah, I've got it's a like big in the. Uh, graph. It's like in the northeast. Northeast coast. I mean, in the above graph. New York. I'm looking at this stupid graph. Oh, I know sorry. I thought you. Meant, I thought you meant geographically. You weren't sure where it was. So uh, I was trying I to pinpoint know. you too, there. Maybe it's too small for this fucking graph. I'm it is at. a small little but, state. But yeah. yeah, like like certainly you you like the South US has this has more more problems. Right. Um, I mean, there's a big problem with. Um, with uh, with people getting obviously obesity and heart disease and diabetes and things like that is a is a problem in in different parts of the states. Well, that's that's yeah. that is that is becoming more prevalent just in the West in general now, though it as is, well. Yeah. France is having problems with it. The UK, of course, has problems with it. You know, I don't know about Germany, but I mean, last time I went to Germany, fucking hell, everybody was just like young and in good shape. It looked like. Maybe it was the place I was at. This huge park in uh, Munich, yeah, and uh, it had this like really 
really quite strong river that went right through it and people yeah, were know, swimming in it and stuff yeah and literally crazy. everybody there looked like they just come off of a like a calvin klein underpants yeah. shoot or something it was insane <laughs> it's, a, it's the same in stockholm everybody seems to be in in great shape there as well well yeah. dressed it's crazy it's, I mean, this uh, is a this is a great email I've just had. This is from Pete. You, all right, sorry. Sorry, just before no, we no, carry you on, go like, ahead, bud. You go talking about right dying, but going back to birthing, what, what do you think about the 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 the, the idea of the panspermia um, cum bubble hypothesis from from space? Um, oh, that, that we were we were seeded by organic material from another world. Well, no, not necessarily even from another world. I think when you have complex compounds on some of these um comets and mm. other things they aren't necessarily even like um from another world they're, right. they're, in space you can get this um these things called tholins which are like organic compounds that come from cosmic ray or ultraviolet irradiation of simple stuff like carbon dioxide mm. and methane and nitrogen and water and so there's the idea that just comets themselves, even if they didn't come from another world, provided the complex, the, 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 start, the, the starting so complex So they're like the incubator molecules. for the complex chemicals and organic chemicals. That then crashes into the Earth, lands in some area where Yeah, but if it like, crashes into the Earth, wouldn't it just get like nuked in the atmosphere like while it was No, you'd be entering? surprised how much can survive, like, yeah. Yeah. especially big, bigger, bigger ones. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, all it needs to do is deliver the chemicals. We're not talking about delivering living things. But they would have to be so heavily concentrated with the chemicals. Like so, it wouldn't just be a surface thing. Like it would have to Not be really. The whole, it I would mean, like a virus, like you only a... need one virus to 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 trigger one viral, comp, you know, to to to, to trigger an, an infection. You know, you don't need a lot. Yeah, the so movie as, Osmosis as as... Jones. He he has one single bad germ. Oh, of in him. course, yeah, Osmosis Jones. I forgot about that. <laughs> This is, Sorry, this, science. Is, uh, this is from Pete. I worked at Argos for a few years. For those of you who don't know what Argos is, if you're outside the UK, it is a shop. Uh, Bill Bailey famously described the catalogue in Argos like the laminated catalogue of dreams. Yeah, you just um, it's a catalogue. So it's like consumers <laughs> sure. distributing in Canada in the 80s. You, there's you no, there's no shop. You just yeah. go into... Uh, there's basically like, like a reception area with catalogues. You pick what you want and then you order it. And sometimes they can go out back and get it for you. Yeah. Otherwise, so they'll like, it's like arrange a to deliver it to your house. Shop. Yeah. Exactly. So you don't browse around a storefront. You browse a catalogue. And then they get it from the warehouse. For yes, you. that's that's. Awesome. It was a quite a fun experience when I was a kid. Yeah, I, think, I used to you know, love that when I was a kid. We used to go to. Oh, I used man. to like all the time, yeah. going into the shop with my parents, getting that little pen, yeah, writing yeah, the a code, toy pages, finding a code. Just looking like at the toy game. pages was like a fantasy. It was like. Okay, occasionally they had like a couple of little bits and pieces like it was a very small reception kind of like mm. shop from but they would have sometimes they'd have like a little jewelry cabinet with like watches in it yeah yeah they and did, yeah. Uh, occasionally they'd have like video games as well like nes games that's like, right in a cabinet and yeah i mean and this was before you really had regular stuff being delivered to you at least we didn't get stuff delivered to us very often so it was almost like you go and get a present right you you put this code on this piece of paper you take it to the man yeah and you'd wait like excitedly for a minute while he rummaged around in the warehouse and brought yeah, you this I, I, present. Home delivery was just not a huge thing back then. I don't no. know why. But but like even if you went in there and they didn't have it, they would ask you to come back. Like they would phone you and say it's in and then you'd yeah. have to go back and pick it up. Like they yes, just did right. almost did everything they could to not deliver to your house. Like I guess it was I don't know, maybe just not the done thing at the time. I mean this yeah. is a long ass time ago. Yeah, yeah. Know. Well Pete is still working there. Uh, oh, wow. He's worked in Argos for a few years. So I'm his, amazed his, it's still going. I know. It's now the, the only one I know is part of home base. Like yeah, the, they the usually have home the, base, it's in there. They usually have a little desk inside another big store, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I went in they had one in an Asda. We went into an Asda one time when we were in the really? UK and they had an Argos counter at the back, yeah. Which seems weird, right? Because like yeah. Asda kind of has everything, but yeah. There it was. Well, Pete says the, the first story is in three years of working here, no man has ever accepted help getting an item to their car if a woman is present. Really? Uh, I've, I've seen a man punch holes in two boxes containing chairs in order to carry them. Another tried to carry a 67 kilogram washing machine on his own. Even if it's a 12 foot trampoline in three boxes, they will never accept help and instead will struggle on their own. There are no exceptions to this rule that I've seen so far. <laughs> no, I know. Um, Some people just feel like they have to do it, you know? I, did, I, I feel like that is, is very common to people not accepting help. Oh, my God. I will offer it, but... I am, I am forever seeking help. 
Like I am not, <laughs> I'm standing really? there and I'm like, I buy something. And if they're, if they're not like forthcoming with help, I'm like, what the fuck do you want me to do with this now? Like, I'm not carrying it. You, you know what I mean? Like I, I will, I will right. get the help for sure. I, I actually, I'll rope other people into it right. as well if I have to. I can understand mm. wanting to carry it because I know this is going to sound sexist, but maybe it's just Mrs. F. She's always impressed when I lift something very heavy. Yeah. She just is. And it's nice to impress uh, your, your, your woman. That's, that's it. Mm. So I think for a lot of blokes, it's a chance to show off that they can lift stuff. What if that's you it. lifted something so simple. heavy that you shit your pants, though? Like, well, that would that's be the, that's the risk. That's the yeah. risky run. But I'm at, at the least age it's, now where it's pretty loose down there. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, there's, you're running well, I'm at least probably farting if I'm bending over to pick something out. So, I mean, know? I'm just saying that, that they're doing it because they want to impress their missus. That's it. Yeah. Um, also, I think if they, they, they like to think, maybe if they're single, but if, they, if a woman sees them carrying something heavy, they'll swoon and fall for them instantly, which yeah. is certainly what the movies have told me. If only it was that easy, eh, guys? Jeez. Uh, women. Uh, the other thing is how some people are barefaced liars. Here's an example. Me. Have you used the phone at all? This is someone trying to return a phone. Them. No, I never even turned it on. Me. It's on, and your mum just texted you. Them. Actually, uh, it's faulty and won't charge properly. So they're just trying to return a phone that they have been actively using and lying about it. Oh, that's a good one, Pete. Keep up the good work at Argos. Um, I don't know if it'll still be around in, in a few years' time, but best of luck. To you. What have I got? I've got, some, I've got some news articles if you want to hear. Yeah, go on, son. Yeah, let's hear there them. Was a, so I heard a news this week about um, a new Mars mission, a uh, moon mission, new moon mission, which is yeah. cool. There's, for the Artemis. first time in like 50 years, yeah. we're going to land some dudes on, well, on first, the first moon. First, we're going to do a drive-by, yeah. scope it out, because, you know, moon might have changed. You don't know. They're going to do a little, I think they're going to test the... The it's not to doing just it. dudes this time either. There's a woman. There's a woman doing on the it, team. So women can be dudes. I think that's fine. I think you can uh, call. I'm just saying if I dude. say if I say guys, I'm not referring to just blokes. No. I think what's up, guys, yeah. refers to everybody that's present. So there are astronauts going on a fucking mission to the yeah, moon, which is hype. Yeah, that is hype. That yeah. is hype. Um, I know that they think that they've discovered surface water on the moon in the form of like crystals oh yeah or like pebbles that are like frozen water yeah. um I, I read that article the other day and they think because the thing is if you get a moon base and you can first of all you can grow stuff there if you have water so you could eat you could also make fuel from the water so if you have water it's like the base level of a, a moon base Obviously, you wouldn't, you'd still need materials and the, the rest of it. No, I think that, yeah, it's cool. But I think the problem with making a moon base is that because there's no atmosphere on the moon, it just gets absolutely shit on by every piece of crap in space, right? Everything hits How do you it. mean? Well, oh, you, you, yeah, you mean things get impact hit by a little... with the moon all yeah. the time. Like, with because we have atmosphere, anything that 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 is going to hit us just gets nuked before it can even hit the ground, right? So yeah, we don't have to worry certainly. about that. But on the moon, everything's just going to get pelted relentlessly right, and broken. You, you, you don't live above ground, I guess, is the point. Yeah. Is that you, you it's have, a lot of work, though. You, you could be underground. Yeah. That's one thing. Also, I suppose you, um, you'd have to hope that... If, I guess if, we're, if you're on the side facing the Earth... You'd have to have some really Earth, strong solar panels on there. You would. But if you're on the side facing the Earth, I, I'd have to assume that most little things coming through space would hit Earth rather than the moon, because it's so much... Uh, it's right no, there and it's I mean, got more if you look, gravity, look at the surface of the moon, it's like it's been hit it a lot is. of times. But, has well, it been no, hit but that's recently? just because there's no erosion. Mm -hmm. So I mean it's hit as much as Earth, but we it hasn't gone away. Those craters are billions not well, potentially billions of years old, but they're certainly many millions of years. There's gotta be old. some new ones as well though. I yeah, well, I mean, there's, but there's new ones on Earth, but again they're covered up. Like if anything properly sizable hits uh, Earth or the Moon, it'll be a real fucking event. You know, but, but it wouldn't take much. Something on the size of a 50p coin traveling at great speed yeah, crashing could, that could into your... Rip up your... It's going to fuck you up. Your so. Moon Dome, easy. Everything's yeah. going to have to be sectional. You're going to have to have... Uh, I think underground areas for people most of the time. You'd grow stuff above ground in a series of compartments that are, you know, if there's a, a, a breach, you can go and seal yeah, them or whatever. If they make it all with Teflon, maybe it's okay. I I, I'm sure they'll they'll figure it they're out. They're going to make it all with Teflon. No, but I think the idea is that uh, they're going to stage a lot of their Mars missions from the moon. So it's going to be like a first you enter space uh, and then you go to... What's going to be like a? I think they. I think they want to get a, a like a space station that is at the moon, like orbiting the moon, and then uh, that's a place where uh, craft can dock to refuel, mm. crew can rest, resupply, and stuff. And then from there, 
they go to Mars. I think that's the that's like the yeah. That's the long term. That's the long term goal. There's been yeah. a lot of interesting proposals. I, I remember. I don't know whether this is based on how much reality it's based on, but Artemis is Andy Weir's moon yeah. book that was that was looking at being the next Martian. I think it was optioned for Hollywood. I don't know. I don't know what process it's along on getting actually made into a movie, but their idea is that they build this big aluminium smelter on the moon, right? And as a result, the oxygen is like a byproduct, right? Um, so, well, because with water, you can cycle it, you know, pretty much permanently, yeah, um, get it, you know, getting it back out of, you know, as long as you've got enough water, you can just keep it in a cycle, whereas oxygen gets used up. And so they have to have this aluminium thing that provides um, oxygen for the for the colony. And that's the kind of, it's quite, it's quite a nice idea. And, you know, you could imagine that being used as like a, a, a low cost staging base for building stuff in space, because it's a lot cheaper to get into moon orbit than into like earth orbit yeah. um i mean i doubt so, yeah. it'll ever happen because of the cost um and i think yeah to i a think lot in of, the book a it turns out that it's like nowadays. a front for a crime syndicate or something oh, of course it's like joe you know means there's some there's some nonsense, richard but... uh richard branson's uh virgin <laughs> virgin space or virgin galactic is it or whatever mm. they, they virgin orbit went they, bankrupt this week yeah, yeah they did, laid yeah. off like 80 percent of their staff and well stuff. i think their thing was not that's not the galactic one that's not the tourism one but that's the one where it launches um stuff and stuff into space from planes oh right and it, it did it did it did one it had one satellite launch and it failed and i think that was like everyone like lost all faith in it from right. then on do you know yeah I mean? I mean spacex had a lot of failed launches at first and they look at them now i, I mean i think the the, the key is we the space elevator idea that, that's been going around for a long time would be the one thing that would really make a difference, I think. Because you just build this space elevator. Fuck, and then I would you just, never go on that. You just winch stuff up to space. Like, that's much, much cheaper um, in terms of fuel and everything. And it, it, it's just so much easier. Imagine you got to the top of that and then out. you did a silent takedown on uh, the guard at the top and then dropped them down the elevator shaft, the space elevator shaft. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, my God. I think that's basically like Ad Astra, which is that the Ad Astra film. Kind of oh, take forever, man! I love this this stuff. I do love the sci-fi future stuff so much. I just want. I just want to. I wonder how I love much of it we'll get to experience in our lifetime. None. It's like so None. slow. It's going to take it? forever. We're already like past it, <laughs> past the point of no return. I feel like uh, I don't think we're going to. I'm see happy it. about that. I feel like uh, you know, like when people look back at the '80s or like well, the '90s especially now, people seem to like to look back at the '90s and think it was so jivey. But like, I don't know. I always feel like we're in the '90s somehow. Like every, it always just feels so jivey, right? Like uh, because we have this imagery of like really sleek, advanced sci-fi from books and movies and stuff like that. And then you look at where we like where we live and and how we do stuff and everything it just seems like man it's not there yet <laughs> it's not even close like we, we're, we're not we're, we're nowhere close to any of this stuff like it's all so, uh, so here's far what I away want you to do. i want you to go and look up on youtube any film that's just like uh footage of say london in the early 90s yeah and then and then come back next week and tell me if you think that things haven't improved yeah. because I, I guarantee you I know you they, have been, they have they have no improved. longer around I, and no but I, I'm know talking that they about have. stuff delivered by mail but yeah, more than sure. that, I'm just talking about the the build quality of the average thing oh I know I know I I, I totally agree but it, it is so gradual and it's taken so long to, well I think it's to do the classic thing about space is like it's supposed to be inspirational right I, I think I spoke about this before but like the idea is that it's less about I mean it's obviously incredibly expensive and you know that money could go into care of people who need it and all this other stuff right and improving society generally but it's this kind of more like a thing that energizes people in society and, and it helps through it's 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 just desire this ambitiousness right it's desire to to reach out to the stars and have an Im impact beyond our planet and think beyond our planet right and look and look up um and, and to something more important than you know our petty squabbles down here and it's sort of having a more awareness of your small part in a bigger universe yeah. is good for the culture of people right and so doing these space missions is good to remind people that you know we share this planet not we fight over it right yeah. and it feels like there's a lot of people fighting over stuff i read an article this week about um some guys in brussels were playing monopoly right and they got in and one of them got angry pulled out his samurai sword and they all ended up in hospital <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> which feels like a very monopoly thing rich, to do yeah. who just rich has story. a fucking samurai sword knocking about well quite a lot of the people. 40 year old virgin yeah. had had a whole collection of them as <laughs> i recall that's true. yeah it's quite a neckbeard thing to 
to have a katana. Sorry if you're listening and you have a collection of yes, katana. Yes, some Triforce fan is well. looking nervously at their at their <laughs> sweating <laughs> sort of collection on the wall. Sweating, fiddling, <laughs> fiddling nervously with their kimono, staring at I their... Mean, I- I feel like that was a. It used to be a thing that you would see in like a James Bond movie, right? There'd be like a katana in a villain's house, and they'd get into a fight with it, right? But yeah. But now it feels like it's just on a shelf with a load of anime dolls and stuff. <laughs> um, the emasculation of the samurai sword is is complete. It has I really gone point. gone down. Here's a, here's a good email. This is this is titled "Sips makes fun of a child on crutches." No. Right. Okay. Yes. I am, I am a fan of the pod with I a shriveled husk of a member. Wait for it. And would like to share a funny incident that happened when I was recently listening to an old Triforce. I was out walking my dog while listening to Triforce number 99. Well, so, that is an old Some time one, yeah. ago. And Sip says something about people who use two crutches being greedy <laughs> and that they should only use one. <laughs> to Perian's agreement, I might add. Well, what, what At the take? exact moment Sips is saying this, and I finish around the corner, <laughs> I see a young girl, no older than seven, with a broken leg, leg struggling to get up her driveway on two crutches. Oh, hogging, man. Hogging both crutches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no! Oh, that's fucking hilarious! Though. Oh, fucking hell! I can't believe that, that. greedy, selfish bitch. <laughs> well, the, P.S. If I had the social, if I had the social sense of Lewis, I would have passed by and commented on how the greedy little shit could have gotten by on one crutch. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Henry. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Uh, Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Jesus Christ. Need both of those, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Hell. No, I mean, there's oh. definitely some cases where you need two, right? But, like... <laughs> I, I was. Yeah. I think I was referring more to people that like uh, use them. Um, you know when they're walking really fast and they look like they have ski poles. What, like what are they doing? Right, right, right. What are they they're doing with those damn things? Like that can't be helping. That must be hindering. I would walk so much faster without those poles in my hands. Yeah, like, they're just going to slip over and break their other leg. At, you know, yeah. it's just, no one's helped yeah. in that case. Then they need a, two more crutches. Four. Oh, fucking bizarre, eh? Well, what a weird world we live in. Waste of crutches. Um, that's That was great. Thank you, P-Flex. Yeah, thank let's, you so let's, much. Let's, uh, let's put a pin in this. Thank you, everyone, for listening to yes. the podcast this week. Thank you very and, much. Um, we, we'll be back. We, we, it might be a bit spotty over the next few weeks because Perian's got a trip away. But yeah. we're going to see if we can record... Some on the road. We'll see. We'll we'll, we'll meet up. We'll try we'll to do some on the roads. Yeah, it'll be good to keep in um, keep in the loop. And uh, I've got a few interesting things coming up as we move into summer. Whoa, oh man! I let's get it. spring. Let's get spring underway. Oh first, my god! Spring, yeah, fine. just like we'll just a little bit of sun and maybe like yeah, uh, just like, it's twelve oh, degrees out here today. I'm going outside in a sec, actually. I mean, That's we we planted glorious. everything. We, I, when I get back from uh, being away, power washing the, the the patio, getting the barbecue out, getting everything nice and tidy. Man, I'm gonna grow just a it's, shit ton of wait. strawberries this year. I'm feeling Do strawberries oh, wow. this summer. Do like, it. I want. Tons. I mean, I I felt I went out the other day to take the recycling out, and I felt the warmth of the sun on my face for the first time. It, it honestly feels like it was such a long cold winter. It really was a, a, a cold really, one. When I do that, horrible. it's like Wizard of Oz, you know, with the witch melting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I right, did melt. Yeah. I'm not saying I didn't melt, obviously. Oh, all right. Well, that's that's, that's enough. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.